Hello, bonjour. I'm Angela, and I'm the Indigenous Coordinator for the Early On Child and Family Centers in Simcoe County. And I've come together today with Sharon um, to do a video for you. Um, Sharon, would you mind introducing yourself? Uh, Ani Angela, I am Sharon from uh, Empower Simcoe's Early On Child and Family Centers. Uh, we work together a lot, don't we? <laughs> yeah. I'm often in Barry, and uh, I want to offer a land acknowledgement today for our video. Angela. Oh, miigwech, miigwech. So the Empower Simcoe Early On Child and Family Centers acknowledges we're situated on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabeg people. The Anishinaabeg include Ojibwa, Odawa, and Potawatomi Nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We're dedicated to honoring Indigenous history, culture, and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. Oh, miigwech, Sharon. That was beautiful. So I thought maybe we could offer up a smudge now. And in my bowl, you'll see some white flakes. That's sage and... Sage is one of our sacred medicines. So let me just take this a bit. I want you to be able to see the sage in there burning. Ah, oh, there we go. So we're gonna cleanse our bodies and set our intentions for the day. Now, I'd like to offer the smudge to you. So I thought maybe, um, as we often do, we would start with a song. Um, I have an Ani song that we like to sing, and that means Hello, in Ojibwe. And if you have something that you would like to uh, have a shaker, or if you have something, a drum you can drum on, or even a container that you can tap on, join us, please. So remember, we always start with our four honor beats. Ani, 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 Anishna, Anishna, Ani, 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 Anishna, Anishna, Ani, everyone. Oh, fantastic. Um, you got Sharon for uh, playing your shaker and, and joining me. So, I thought maybe today I would talk to you a little bit about um, storytelling. Typically, Anishinaabe would save storytelling for the winter, a time when the animals and plant life um, are all sleeping. Um, our ancestors believed that if you told stories in the summer, at a time when you had many, many jobs to be done, um, the birds, the plants, the animals, they would all stop what they were doing. Um, plants wouldn't grow our food, and animals would stop feeding their young. However, since it's Indigenous Peoples Month, um, I thought maybe we would share a, a story or two today together. And I heard, Sharon, you have a really cool story about chickadees. Would you share that with us? Yeah, Angela, I'm excited to do that. Thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, a Mi'kmaq elder shared a story with me about chickadees and it originates from the east coast of Canada on the Atlantic Ocean. So a long time ago in the autumn, the creator was sitting under a beautiful maple tree admiring all those great colors that uh, change in the fall and the red leaves were falling 
down among, around him. And he noticed the children around him didn't have much to play with. So he caught some of those colored leaves in his hand uh, and he transformed those leaves into chickadees. <laughs> so uh, uh, once he was ready, he had those leaves in his hand, he transformed them into chickadees and he called the children over. So he said, wait, come over and see what I have here. So he asked the kids to put out their hands, open up your hands, and he put seeds in the children's hands. Yeah. <laughs> and he told them, if you're very quiet and you always respect these little birds, uh, they will come and eat from your hands. They'll always come to you. That's it. Well, Alan, thank you. We <laughs> watched. That's a wonderful story. So you know, Sharon, I have a story about chickadees and my story is about why chickadees don't fly south anymore. Um, would you like to hear that one? Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks, Angela. Okay. So um, a long, long time ago, um, all the birds, they used to fly south. And uh, this little guy, Nishima, um, he liked to practice and practice and make sure that his wings were getting strong. So he would fly with his mom and they would fly and fly and fly. But you know what? Nishima was a little bit of a show off and he would <laughs> like to go really high. And sometimes he would go upside down and he would spin around. And one day when he was out flying, he wasn't paying attention and he went bang right into a tree. Well, he fell to the ground and do you know what? He hurt his poor little wing. Mm -hmm. Oh, poor Nishima. Oh. He, he couldn't fly anymore. Only one wing worked, the other one was broken. Mm -hmm. Oh, how would he get food? How, how like, I, I don't know what, what would happen. Well, you know, his mom, she would go and she would find some food and then she would bring it to him. And his dad, he would fly off and get some food and he would bring it to him. And that happened for a very long time, hoping that, you know, his poor little wing would mend. But it was starting to get cold outside. And you know, when it gets cold outside, all the birds, they started to fly south where it was warm and there was lots of uh, food to get. And you know, one of those birds was the raven and he would fly and fly and he would fly south. And you know who else would fly south? The goose, he would fly south. And mm -hmm. this little guy, who's not very little, the loon. <laughs> he would fly south too. Well, we knew that poor Nishima, he couldn't fly. So his family decided that they were gonna stick around and they would help him um, not be so lonely all winter. So Mama Bird, she knew she needed to find a place for them to sleep and stay for the winter cause it was gonna get really cold. So she flew into the edge of the forest and she came upon some tall, tall birch trees. And she, she knocked on that birch. She said, uh, Mr. Birch, Mr. Birch, do you have room for my family to stay? Well, Birch said, no way. Get out of here. I don't have room for you. I have so many of your friends living in my tree. There's not room. Well, this disappointed Mama Bird but she understood and she flew on. And then all of a sudden, she almost ran into this great big tree that had acorns all around on the ground. And she went, hey, Mr. Oak, Mr. Oak, do you have room for my family and me? He said, get lost, get out of here. There's no room for you guys. Too many friends are already here. Your squirrel friends, your chipmunk friends. No, no, move on. Well, that disappointed Mama Bird. Oh gosh, 
what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And just as she was reaching the edge of the forest again, she heard, Mama Bird, Mama Bird. Who was that? Who was it? It was the cedar tree. The cedar said, come over here, come over here. And so she got really nice and close to the cedar tree. And he said, you can come and stay with me. I have room for you. I will keep you warm and I will protect you. And I even have teeny tiny cones right here. And they have seeds and you can have them to feed your babies. Well, this excited Mama Bird. So back she went and she got Nishima and the dad and all of the family and off they went to the cedar tree. Now, after the long, long winter, Mishima was feeling a little bit better. And in the spring, when those big birds came back, she, Mama Bird, and Nishima said, you don't have to fly south anymore. You can stay with the cedar tree. He has lots of room. So they told the cardinal. There he is. <laughs> Sorry, he was backwards. Oops. The cardinal could stay. The blue jay could stay. And all the, the chickadees, they stayed in the nest. <laughs> so now, you know the reason why chickadees don't fly south anymore. <laughs> miigwech, Angela. Ah, oh, miigwech, Sharon. So I hope that you guys understand um, and in, have enjoyed our stories. Um, and know that Indigenous people love, value, honor, and respect our animals. And the stories we tell, they vary from nation to nation. So even though we told stories about the same topic, yours was slightly different than mine, Sharon, but they're both beautiful stories. Oh, yeah. So I thought just before we go, maybe we could have a little song. We would say, Mama P to each other. Sounds good. Okay, here we go. So remember, we have to do our four honor beats. Men, until I see your light again. Bama pee. Bama pee.